All right, so good day, people of tomorrow. We warmly welcome all of you, our dearest participants, to AMSEP's very first masterclass with the team AMSEP 101. My name is Davina, hailing from Malaysia and this 10 years director of AMSEP of AMSA International, and also the executive committee in charge of this session. Next slide, please, Mo. Right, so before we begin, let's all watch a short promotional video from AMSA International. With this, may I please request everyone to switch off your videos beforehand to reduce the bandwidth necessary for the video to play smoothly. Thank you so much. The Asian Medical Students Association International is a peak representative organization for medical students. From numerous local chapters around the globe, training doctors from numerous local chapters combine to share knowledge, undertake activities and social services, and create international and transcontinental friendships. AMSA was officially founded in Manila, Philippines in 1985 and to this day has been an active, dynamic, and exciting student life. Nonprofit and non-political organization. Today, with members and friends spanning across the globe, AMSA has an active student exchange program, owns a biomedical journal which provides AMSA members an avenue to get their works published, regularly undertakes national and regional projects, provides humanitarian assistance at times of need, Produces quarterly student publications. Provides opportunity for AMSA members who have graduated to maintain social contact. And liaises with numerous organizations and companies. To facilitate and promote health, growth, and development for the benefit of society and our members. AMSA's biannual conferences, EMSC, and AMSC have been a key focus for the organization. Every year, these events see over 700 students from across the world combine to learn from each other, teach their fellow peers, and develop lasting friendships. For more information, you can find us on email, YouTube channel, Weibo, Instagram, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, or you can visit our website. Right, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to request everyone to please turn your videos back on. Thank you. Okay, with this, we would like to officiate our first subsidiary masterclass on AMSEP for the tenure 2020-2021. Personally, my journey in AMSEP has never been not something remarkable. Aside from being the most anticipating subsidiary, right, here's a new program of AMSEP pioneered from this tenure onwards. And as the international director of AMSEP for this tenure, I am indeed so grateful to have the opportunity to work with my fellow comrades and once again, for making this happen. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Maul and also Kat, the DOMND babies, and of course our OC Marjorie, someone who has significant amount of passion for AMSA. And as we all can see, we have an overwhelming amount of participants today with a total of 113 participants. Oh my god, I really appreciate your enthusiasm 
for um for the AMSAP subsidiary, right? I know AMSAP is the best subsidiary. <laughs> okay, despite the pandemic limiting us to physical interactions. I've had a lot of my national deal AMSAPs coming to me asking, okay, Davina, when's the estimated time where we could carry out physical AMSAPs again? But you know, only to acknowledge the fact that the situation needs to improve globally for physical exchanges to resume. Yeah, sadly. Okay, nonetheless, we hope that you can gain as much knowledge as you can from today's session. We have amazing and experienced speakers with us today to provide a fair share of experiences from various levels, from university level to international level. All right, next slide, please, Maul. Right, so you can probably see some of your friends on screen. Um, from the previous exchanges that we've had physically and also virtually. So yeah, with this, let me end my welcoming speech for today with the phrase, AMSAP is one, a phrase chosen by yours truly, is what I wish to see through all the exchanges this tenure, right? Despite the dreadful pandemic, I understand it can be very disappointing, but we should all continue to strive for a sense of togetherness through the three philosophies of AMSAP, knowledge, action, and friendship, right? Thank you so much. Next slide, please, Maul. So our agenda for today comprises four main components focusing on the management of AMSAP at various levels. Participants would have the chance to speak and present their views on the approach to our commonly encountered situations when handling or participating in an AMSAP. During this session, we encourage everyone to share your ideas and perhaps experiences with your group members. A quick change of tentative, we won't be having any breaks for today, so be sure to sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. All right, next slide, please. All right, so our first agenda for today, right, will be an interactive session and presentation by our first speaker, Ms. Marjorie Ong Jai, who is the current overall chairperson of AMSA International, and of course, my humblest predecessor of AMSAP on the importance of establishing successful contracts, followed by a short Q&A session. Therefore, participants may type out the questions using the Zoom chat feature, or if you wish to verbalize your question instead, you may also raise your hand. Without further ado, let's invite Ms. Marjorie. Okay, thank you so much, Davina, for the kind introduction. So, hi everyone, good afternoon from Malaysia GMT Plus 8. Um, it is indeed very overwhelming to see all of you here today, the highest number of participants for a masterclass. So, next slide, please. So um, I was appointed to deliver a very dry topic. I was very sad when I got the topic. It's very, very dry. <laughs> the importance of establishing successful AMSAP contracts. And when I saw the list of speakers, they were appointed to talk about cooler stuff. So um, I'm going to leave the cooler titles to them and more of the technical parts to them. So I will be going through the dry history of AMSEP. Please bear with me. It will be really, really dry. Even when I prepared, <laughs> when I prepared the slides a few days ago, I was also feeling very tired and very bored throughout the whole process. Okay, anyway, so next slide, please. So today we'll be covering four important aspects. What is a contract in general? and the history of the AMSEP contract. So it's very dry, right? Okay, realizing the importance of contract, very basic and very general, but definitely if you have any uh, questions that are more in depth, feel free to just leave it in the comments, uh, in the chat box. And last but not least, modi operandi to realizing an AMSEP. So it's a very short set of slides. Next slide, please. So what is a contract? Okay, next slide. Next slide, please. So a contract is a legal, legally binding agreement supported by the AMSAP constitution in the AMSAP context. An offer is made by an offerer to an offering. So who are the offers and who are the offerings? It depends on your local level. Some chapters, they tend to pass the authority to their local director of AMSAP and some uh, of AMSAP and some will actually be dealt only by the national director of AMSAP. So it depends on how you want the negotiation to be. I don't mind, but the signatures, the people to legalize, that is the point for number four. Um, consents for realization includes the signatures of two chapters, national directors of AMSAP and the international director of AMSAP. Okay, so first step, acceptance. Second, declaring intentions. 
third step considerations, and last but not least, what I've done, the concepts. Okay, next slide, please. Very, very dry. Okay, be ready, guys. Okay, so the history now. So next slide. Next slide. Okay, so the history of how the key persons actually evolved. Not much of a difference, but there's a little, little, little small difference there. I want you guys to realize. So from its establishment, okay, um, just want to make it more interactive a bit. So when was AMSEP initiated? When was this idea initiated? Can someone just type in a year in the chat? I just want to see like you guys, if you guys can guess. I think many of us are still kids. Oh, no, close, <laughs> I think. Oh, yes, 2003, wow. Okay, okay. I can't give you some, anything, but I give you my love. Who is Marky? I give you my love. <laughs> okay, so when was the first pilot AMSET held? So the idea came about at 2003. So when was it held? The first pilot AMSET. Hey, Manju, no. <laughs> Hold on, I need to double confirm as well. Oh yeah, it's actually correct. <laughs> 2006. Okay, Manju, I love you. Thank you so much, Manju. <laughs> okay, so in 2006. So you can see the process of setting things up. And uh, just to add on, this year, we set up uh, many new things and it's all being squeezed in just six months and everything is already launched under our tenure. And so it is a really very tedious process. And therefore, you see, we are all very old looking because we sacrifice our state. But anyway, so from the establishment until summer 2019, the offerers are any chapters or universities without consent from the international director of AMSA. You will find it very nice, you know, because, oh, I can just connect with anyone I want to connect with. You see, so that's the fun part of it before the and the offering is the relevant twin that was directly approached, plus minus much negotiation. So this is the risky part. Yes, we have a contract to protect us, but to what extent? And to what extent will actually someone protect you under the law? And so a lot of queries came up, a lot of uh, dissatisfactories, I can say, and a lot of misunderstandings. And so therefore, in the year of 2019, when I took over, that was uh, in August uh, 2019, and until now, we have practiced a new system with the preliminary grant list. But there are disadvantages. Okay, I will just let you guys read about it, but I will just uh, pronounce the advantages and disadvantages of the current system that we have. Previously, we have a lot of freedom. Yeah, it's damn cool. But diversity is assured, inclusive because many chapters that were previously not active are now participating in AMSEP, and that is a very good plus point. Previously, only a few universities are actually more biased and picked to be exchanged, okay? Uh, even in my own chapter, I can say that uh, in AMSEP Malaysia, it was practiced as so, and it was very sad to see. And, you know, I, I should actually favor towards this point because my university itself is a very active university in AMSEP and therefore we were always prioritized. But one thing happened after that is that uh, because we were always exchanging, we were the only ones ex exchanging and therefore people tend to not beat and approach us anymore. And that happened. So, you know, it is a very nice start to the subsidiary at that time, but then it wasn't sustainable and people get bored. People is like looking like, okay, so I'm from the National University of Malaysia. It's like, oh no, it's this university again. Why are they coming to approach us again? Why are they exchanging again? We want to exchange with someone else. So that kind of thing happened. And so the other stuff, so you guys can read from the slides. Uh, the, the main disadvantage for the system would be the longer time that you have to wait for the list. Nevertheless, uh, handovers take place over a period of time. It happened between me and Davina. And so extensive discussions have to take place to actually assign and distribute the list of universities under uh, by the, the international director of AMSEP. And so it is extensive and therefore there's a little time lagging there. But other than that, I can say that the advantages outweighs, outweigh the disadvantages. Okay, so next slide, please. Another very dry slide. I'm so sorry. So it is about the components. So at first, sadly, um, 
I know this is recorded, but the contract system only started at summer 2015. And so this year is only the sixth year of this practice. And therefore, I congratulate all of you for being part of this journey and to experiencing legalized exchanges. Okay, so the contract system is established with only signatories of the offeror and offeree and nothing else. It was just a piece of paper with very vague statements. Exchange will take place between who and who, and it is recognized and acknowledged by who and who. That's all. And then in summer 2016, the components came in, the ones that you guys are seeing. I hope that everyone has seen a contract before, okay, because I have always urged all of the national directors of AMSEP to send them out. So if you do not receive, please find them. They should send it to you. You have the rights to know what have been agreed and not just blindly follow. You have the rights, okay? And it is for your welfare and your safety, okay? So, um, Summer 2019, a few things were changed. Deadlines were defined to days because some people, they will tend to argue, you know, when you have um, any misunderstanding, they, then they, they will come and come and find you and then they will say, oh, you said four weeks, but then four weeks is how many days? Actually, is, is it from a Saturday to another Sunday or is it just from a Saturday to Saturday or Saturday to Friday? A lot of nonsense come up. And so that's when we actually started uh, to include the days in the deadlines and fundamental contract essentials were included. If you want to know what are the fundamentals, please go and check it out. There are three. Uh, I'm not going through a law class here, but you guys can go and read it up. Okay, and uh, two other new things were included. Name of hosting university. Previously when I took over, a few funny things happened. So they asked me, uh, Marjorie, so this university is exchanging with this university. Uh, can you please trace back what was written in a contract? One thing, why didn't you receive the contract? That is a very funny thing. Second thing, why don't you know which university is exchanging you are the national that you upset? And then, so it's like, uh, and then, I mean, in the twin chapter that is exchanging with you, you don't even know. And then third thing, from my side, how can I trace back? Because I don't know which university is exchanging, it's never recorded. And so therefore, in 2019, we actually added this component. And also reinforcements by quoting the revised UNSEP constitution, we had a very extensive revision of the constitution. And therefore, this was uh, quoted in a few of the sections of the contract. And this year, uh, this tenure, I mean, so Davina added virtual considerations. You know, we don't learn and we don't realize the importance of virtual needs until we really needed it. And so when everyone was very quiet when the, the pandemic came in and we were all very sad and we were like, oh no, there's no law for this. Oh no, there's no reference for this. And that's when all of this came in. And um, it was more of a like informal implementation at the time before I ended my tenure. But then Davina reinforced it through the, the constitution. So thank you so much. And next slide, please. So the dry part is over, guys. So it's a little bit less dry. Realizing the importance of a contract. So next slide, please. So a contract is important for the diplomatic relationship with the twinning chapter. And now with uh, inter-organizational exchanges, it is even more important because that supports you and protects the welfare. I have heard a lot of stories happening with our uh, partnered organizations. And definitely we will have to reinforce and improve in many ways that we can with mutual understanding and agreement from our partners. Second, for the welfare of the involved members, it is you don't really feel it right now as um, everything is virtual, but when it is physical, especially from one in during my tenure when there was all of a sudden a volcanic erupt and they had nowhere to go and they had a plan B, thankfully. So things can happen and you will always have to prep yourselves for the worst case scenario, especially when you are holding a group of people and they are all leaving alive, medical students like you and I, and they still want to leave. And so you really have to care about the welfare and consider a lot of aspects that are really important. Um, you don't see it now, but you have to consider them, especially when it is a physical one. Number three, as the ultimate guide of reference at points of over or under treatments, plus minus legislative measures are to be considered. So uh, pertaining the, especially the inter-organizational exchanges that we have been having. So 
uh, legislative measures are only applicable by one's own organization. I repeat, by one's own organization. So if we receive any complaints from site about you guys, we can only implement it under our own legislation. But if it is under their, by someone from their site, so it will be under their own juris, jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction, it won't be under us at all because um, it is something that we have agreed and it wouldn't be fair as well because the region and the culture is very different and they know what's best for their members. So uh, with that, I extend my deepest apologies if anything happens and we are more than happy to receive more feedbacks about inter-organizational exchanges in particular. So next slide, please. Um, so modi operandi, that's my last expect to realizing an unset contract. Next slide, please. So a contract can be successfully formed with good understanding of the legislative aspect. I know reading the unset constitution will make you go to sleep. It's very long, lengthy, full of words, no pictures, but will bring you to good use when you are going to debate with anyone, <laughs> especially on a contract. And I really do expect all of the national directors to master the constitution in one way or another. If you are too busy, at least master page one to 18 and then your friend page 19 to the last page, for example. So you guys cover everything, especially when you have a few directors. So you guys won't miss anything, especially when you are discussing on some sensitive issues, in particular on financial issues. <laughs> It is something very sensitive, so I hope that you muster the legislative support behind all of these sensitive issues. Number two, identification of your style of leadership accustomed appropriately to your chapter or members. Me personally, I prefer bottom top and altruistic. So it's up to you. How do you prefer? Because why do I want to mention this? If you prefer top bottom, you will finish the negotiation by yourself as the national director, then you will approach your local director. So that is the top bottom approach. You settle everything, you don't ask, but you already know what is best, what is accustomed to your culture and therefore you set the rules before contract. Another way of top bottom example will be the local director, he or herself representing everyone and not discussing it beforehand and select the delegates after that. On my case, I would prefer to actually select the delegates, recruit a team and the delegates be the team themselves as well for the hosting and that they will be able to contribute in important aspects that they have noticed throughout their preparation process. So that's why I prefer the bottom top approach. So it de depends on you how you want to approach your contract. Okay, but Regardless, you will have to declare on your way of approach with your twin chapter or twin university. Because then you will have to set out your timeline on how you want to recruit, how you want to gather feedbacks, and by when will you actually give an answer to proceed with the contract. And so these are important one and two and three, four, five are very basic out of communication. I saw Jovi's slide. So Jovi will be focusing a lot on that, on like communication. Okay, later. Management of time. Okay, is uh, like what I say, timeline, outline. Number five, transparency, diplomacy and empowerment. Okay, always engage your members. They give ideas and thoughts that you don't see because uh, from my past experience, when you're discussing, you're already being a student leader yourself, representing many people, and especially when it's a physical one and you're sending a group of your friends maybe to a place with force major, especially those with pandemic or maybe riots, um, you are quite blinded with like what to do. You don't know what to do, what is best. And a lot of visa considerations are all this point of time and you don't really know until you ask your members and some of your delegates may not even have the relevant visa and may even hold a passport that is barred from that country that you didn't know so these are the points that you have to consider and always always involve members okay that's just my two cents because i love to do the bottom top but it's up to you on how you want to do it but make sure that everyone is informed okay so next slide please Last but not least, 
is passion. Amsterdam um, so is something that is very passion driven. If you don't love Amsterdam, um, I don't know how you're going to do it. Oh my God, I really don't know. <laughs> so um, all in all, I think uh, what has driven me to who I am right now in Amsterdam um, International is Amsterdam. Um, so I really hope that you find your I mean, in a good way towards your job and also empowering this throughout the process. I hope that it's not that dry, but okay, thank you. If you have any queries, I'm more than happy to read personal email to you guys. You can write to me or just appear. Um, I'm quite still with chats, but I'm good with email. <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you. And I hope that you guys stay safe and enjoy the rest of the masterclass. Passing back to you, Davina. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Marjorie. That was indeed a, an amazing lesson for all of us. Everyone is definitely looking forward to this session. I understand because we've had a lot of, even our own speakers are here. Our speakers for the later sessions, they're like, oh, I'm going to come early because we want to listen to Marjorie's session. So yeah, thank you so much. Right, now for the Q&A session. Next slide, please, Mo. Okay, next slide, please. So we have the first question for today as shown on screen. How do we tackle the lack of response or slow replies from respective twinning chapters? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure everyone can relate to this. Marjorie? Okay, thank you so much. I love this question and it's always one of the top questions that I would train my successor to cope with as well. So first and foremost, you need to know the hierarchical flow for reference. Do you know how this, the hierarchy runs? So if you do not get any contact, for example, if you are a local director, so the next person to approach is your national director. Okay, immediately. I know you guys have your own local systems on how to contact one another, so I trust you guys on that. So what if your national directors can't get a response as well? So here goes another level up, approaching Davina, the international director of concept. And what happens if Davina doesn't get, don't worry, she will contact us immediately. So we have a leadership system and leadership system runs in a way that they call us Papa or Mama. I know it's so cringy, it's so old, oh my God. Yeah, I have nine chapters under me and I have to take care of them. But um, this system was not established before, it's new, but it actually helped us connect with the chapters and tackle the slow response actually very efficiently. So, um, I, I, I'm not sure how the chapters feel, maybe because they feel more pressured when we are approaching them at the OC and the BOC and the BOC are approaching them directly. But um, this is how we do it. And we will approach the regional chairpersons and not only the relevant, the AMSEP office, the relevant. And so more people are involved. And, um, but usually if we do not get any response, empirically is due to major. It can be a war going on. It can be a long-term power cut supply. That This actually happened before. And it can be a really bad natural disaster that happened in that chapter. But as of now, I can say that, um, yeah, for this era is usually due to war and natural disaster. So we will inform you definitely, bottom top and then top bottom again. Uh, so please contact us if you don't get any response. We will let you know what happened, okay? Because they should give you a response and they will. And if they don't, we will tell you why. Okay, that's all. Okay, thank you so much, Marjorie. Okay, for moving on to the next question. What are the common obstacles or hurdles seen in virtual AMSEPs and how can we overcome them? Wow. Hmm. I think this is tough. <laughs> to be honest, it's a very... It depends on the onset. It depends on the people as well. It depends on the tentative. It depends on many things. And uh, these technical parts will be discussed by Kola later <laughs> from ANSA Taiwan DX National Dio Amset. So, um, but what I can say is communication is very important from pre onset and also post onset um, common hurdles will be communication problems, I think. That is a very big thing. Um, 
even for us, we have a lot of communication problems in the board itself due to different time zones, etc. People from different cultures, and I am a kind that really wants to do things quite fast and want to settle it once and for all, and you know, get meetings done quickly, planned out. So some people might actually won't prefer to have that kind of approach, and they might drag. And so um, first will be time. Second will be culture. And third, we'll be concluding everything with a note of communication. And so that sums it all up. Um, but usually what happens is that um, things are very awkward during meetings, preparing, you know, preparations. You get very awkward. You don't know how to solve things. You just laugh awkwardly over things that you can't solve as well. And then you will just meet up in the next meeting. The, usually things are like that. <laughs> but, but thankfully, usually because when you have the delegates, when they are in, you have the pressure, you know, as the host. I'm not sure if you guys have that experience before, but as host, you have the pressure to one thing to achieve and prepare something, a really good experience for them to enjoy. And that's when, okay, first day, it might be quite awkward with the opening and ice breaking, you know, and all. But um, as time goes by, it usually resolves. And so a little tip for this will be having a post-mortem mini postmortem for the host after every day so that would be ideal and i think that it is very healthy to also lay out what the problems that you have faced today and then improve them and try to avoid them in the subsequent days usually the last day will be the best because you learn from your mistakes and then therefore the last day will definitely be the best of them all and also the time to say goodbye and definitely um keeping in touch is a very good way to overcome the awkwardness that you had in the beginning so that's all and have more arm steps and you will learn how to overcome them <laughs> okay thank you okay thank you marjorie i personally think communication is also the biggest hurdle um because i started off as a local dear arm step and then a national dear arm step and now holding this position yes communication is definitely a huge thing um from what i learned in the previous emc uh, the last EMC that we had, there was this phrase that I really hold on to. It means, it says, communication saves lives, right? So um, personally, I myself need to work on my communication skills as well. So uh, I believe we're all learning and we can somehow get there someday with experiences. Okay, final question, because we are running out of time. Next slide, please. Okay, the most anticipated question, the ones I get from... <laughs> Our national deal AMSAPs, we've, we've got Savero asking me from AMSA Indonesia, we've got Priyati asking me from AMSAP India, right? So will, will the force major be lifted once there are decreasing numbers of COVID-19 cases in most countries? Or will we be waiting for all the countries to recover before we can have an AMSAP? Back to you, Marjorie. Okay, thank you so much. So um, I'm not going to hide anything, but the point of reference for this first major implementation has always been WHO, um, because I believe that they know global health really well and they know the best for all. So we will declare in line with WHO's declarations. And we also started our first major in line with WHO's health uh, state of emergency. So if you realize, it was also in March last year. Um, I really can't say how. And uh, with uh, no offense, but with us, most of us being um, from a developing country in the Asia Pacific region, we will definitely have to wait quite some time for a full or um, widely covered distribution of the vaccines. Fingers crossed. I'm not sure even which one our government government will actually purchase. It's a sensitive topic, but all in all, uh, it is uncertain, and um, we will definitely adhere to everything that WHO will announce anytime soon. Fingers crossed. So um, just hoping for the best, and please stay safe while you wait for the announcements. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, guys, now we've heard that from our OC herself. Even our AMC 2021 will be held virtually. Am I supposed to break the news, right? Right? It's correct, right? Yes, yes, it is. It is widely known. So it is virtual, guys. I'm so sorry. But the tours will be really fun. They will actually go to all of the hot spots and do live there, bring 
don't know how are they going to do it, but yeah, they plan to do something like that. So it's a very big sneak peek. It's worth participating. So see you guys then as well. Okay, enough of promoting. I'm seeing. <laughs> okay, okay. So unfortunately, everyone, we are running out of time, and hence the Q and A session for Miss Marjorie will stop here. If you have further questions, as she has dropped her email, you may email her or you may slide into her DMs, right, Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can you can chat here first. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> okay, next slide, please, Mao. Right, so before we move on to the next session, let us express our heartfelt gratitude to our invited speaker, Miss Marjorie, by presenting her with a certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much for your time and vast knowledge in AMSEP. We'll be emailing you a copy of the certificate later today. Thank you, Marjorie. Arigato. Okay. Right, so our next session for today. Okay, our next session for today will also be an interactive session and presentation by our next honorable speaker, someone I've worked with for a very short while before we both retired as National Duo AMSAPs, Ms. Chan Yat Nokkola, the director of AMSAP of AMSA Taiwan in the past tenure on the essentials in AMSAP. FAMSAP and EAMSAP hosting, followed by a short Q&A session. Therefore, participants, you may type out the questions using the Zoom chat feature, or if you wish to verbalize your question instead, you may also raise your hand. Without further ado, let's invite Ms. Kola. Let's go. Hello, everyone. So thank you, Daphna, for inviting me to join the session. And thank you, Matsuri Mama, for such an inspiring session. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kola Chen, and I'm the Pokemon master from MSA Taiwan. And here I dare not say that I'm not any kind of expert in hosting and exchange. I'm just here to share some tips to make the hosting a little bit easier. And together we learn and we grow. So um, I have no doubt that all of you will give the best hospitality to your delegate. But what makes a hosting more remarkable? So let's begin to our topic. So Daphner, I'll need the slides. Thank you. So let's begin the topic. Next. And next slide. So let's begin our topic. The essentialities of MZAP, EMZAP, and FEMZAP hosting. So I know, I know, I know. I know the feeling that every MZAP, EMZAP program starts from a contract. Yes, I know. But every one of you will be very, very excited to have a contract signed. Congratulations on next slide. And it's certainly worth a celebration, right? After you sign a contract. Yeah, hooray. But here comes our first tips. Next slide. Our first tip here is that please remind yourself, keep calm and make it happen. Adjust your expectation in your MSAP exchange program is very important. You will have to deal with loads of problems cultural shocks, currency, language barrier, blah, blah, blah. We all want to have a fantastic journey during our exchange. And we all want our guests to have their best exchange experience in our home country, right? But only if you stay calm, be realistic and work it out step by step, can you make it all happen, okay? So here comes our tips number two, next slide. Next slide, please. Yes, tips number two, do some research on your partner country first. You may think that it is only important for those who are planning outgoing exchange, right? Now here I'm telling you, knowing each other is important for both outgoing and incoming exchange. The time when you are working on your research, ideas will come up like, what is your candidate lifestyle? What, are, what, 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 what do they live? What do they wear? And what kind of weather in their home country? What do they usually eat as their food culture and religions are usually correlated and they may need vegetarian diets or food with no pork. So next slide. Religion usually matters and the more you Google their country, the more you know about what do they have and what they don't have. For example, once I had an experience in an international conference of medical students in Slovenia and it was held in winter, like nine to 10 degrees Celsius, and everyone were wearing in, uh, in thick coats. But I saw some candidates swimming in the sea every morning. And I was like, oh my God, this is freezing cold. And later then I know that those guys are from Russia. And Russia is a country with no seashore. So they have, they have water park, but no seashore. 
and therefore Russians love to go swimming whenever they are near the seashore and they are amazed by the sea. And after asking this kind of question, what they have and what they don't have, then here comes more ideas what the whole thing is going to be. And here comes to our tips number three. Next slide, please. Tips number three. Yes, tips number three. Know the uniqueness of your home country. We all know that there must be several must-go or must-see sightseeing tourism points in our home country, but which of them will mostly impress our training partners? Like we know that Taipei 101, yeah, we have Taipei 101 that we can see very beautiful view of Taipei. It is a must-go sightseeing point, but meanwhile, Jiufen is the best tourism spot to experience the local Taiwanese culture. Then which one should be put into the incoming schedule? And in order to bring the best experience of hosting to our training candidate, we sometimes have to do compare and contrast. Say, if our delegates are from Japan, then probably Jiufen may not be the best idea, as the architecture is indeed quite similar to Japan. And yes, I know sometimes it's difficult, as you have already lived in this place for so, so many years. You may really have no idea how unique your hometown is. So here I suggest you to search in some foreign travelers YouTube channel like this one. Next slide. Let's see if the video could be played properly.
Before you leave, remember to subscribe to our Instagram and see you soon for the next. Thank you, fans got that it could be played. And I know I mean, you guys want to travel to Taiwan so desperately, so I will stop here. Okay, but this is why that you should search about your home country too, because maybe you know where it's the best place to go as a local, but you may not know what they want to go as a foreigner. So let's search about all those series like don't want to go somewhere or first time in Taiwan or whatever kind of series, then you will know more about your own country. And here comes tips number four. All right, uh, last night, previous one, please. Tips number four, uh, define the incoming nature. Because we all know that the MSAP exchange must include academic parts, the social part and cultural part. And these are the pillar of MSAP exchange. But however, the ratio may vary upon different hosting channels. Next slide, yes. And we got to this. My suggestion here is to put it on the table. LCs may ask your partner countries LC what kind of exchange they're expecting. So whether they prefer more in academic or more in social activities. And once both of you have consensus, then the exchange will be developed upon the common ground. And a little hint here is that the delegate from Europe countries are usually quite interested in Chinese herbs and medicine. So in hospital visit and anatomy lab, parasitism lab visit, or sutering workshops are always attractive to most medical students. So try this out. And next slide. Tips number five. Yes, make use of a questionnaire to know your training delegate. Usually we will set a questionnaire for our training delegates to confirm their diet restriction and any kind of food or medicine allergy. And you might think this is just an easy task, but it is indeed very useful and important one when you host them in your home country. Say if our delegate cannot eat pork, but pork is basically the main food ingredient in Taiwan, then you have to reconsider their diet completely. And last time when I was hosting an incoming for delegate from Germany, Monique, one of the delegates replied that she eats vegetarian diet. So we planned something like salad and rice for her. And only until she came, then we realized that she is on diet and we get all sort of carbohydrate, including drinks with sugar. So in this way, we had to work on rearrangement again. So do make use of the questionnaire before you do any planning on the schedule. And moreover, you can set questions like uh, to know more about them. For example, we usually set questions like, uh, what do you expect in this exchange? And what kind of impression do you have about Taiwan? Or a brief introduction of yourself in 50 words. And this kind of information allow us to understand them more before we meet each other. And therefore, we can set up connection strategy in accordance. Next slide. The next slide, the tips number six, will be about connection strategy. Since you already have a basic understanding of your training delegate, so you can now work on the matching plan. So this is one-on-one -on -one connection. We try to put delegate who have similar interests, similar age together. So it is expected to have a better common ground for them to build relationship. But the disadvantage is that if one of your CP is unavailable on some days, then you might need extra human resources to accompany the lonely delegate. So in another connection strategy is like group on one. So we work it out as a teamwork. So we put two to three contact person for one training delegate. So and then even one of our CP may not be available on some days during the incoming period, then they could still take shifts to compensations. But this strategy needs more contact person participation. And LC may sometimes find it difficult to manage too, too many people at the same time. So I would say both strategies have their pros and cons, but either one may fit your own chapter. But whichever strategy you use, make use of the questionnaire to help establish the bonding in a quick way. So tip number seven, next slide please. Tips number seven will be about a flexible planning and always have a plan B. So if you are those who love to stick to plan and make everything on time person, then I'm telling you, it won't happen. It just won't. Plans are just a drop for the journey and it is more like a guideline, but reality is always full of uncertainties. Say you may find your delegate show up late for the section, someone get lost or lost their phone or purse, and the whole group may miss the bus, unstable weather whatsoever, or even a typhoon would crash your country whatsoever and changes come faster than plans. So all we can do is be friends to uncertainties. My suggestion here is making plan in a flexible way. So every session should have 
at least about plus or minus 30 minutes to adjust. And remember, always set up a plan B as a bad weather option. Yes, it means that you have to prepare for some extra work, but you will find it all worthy by the end of the exchange. So tips number eight. Next slide, please. Tips number eight will be about ice breaking. Um, tips number eight, previous slide, doesn't matter. So just the iceberg game, don't look down on the impact on the iceberg game because it is the key to waste the team morale and strengthen the bonding between delegate and CPs. So you may find many types of iceberg games online, but here I suggest you to pick some games that could motivate people to remember names at the beginning and motivate them to disclose themselves more. For example, I like to play Secret Angel for all them. So so the delegate will have to figure out who is their own angels and it will be revealed in the closing ceremony. But some games like Truth or There, the host has to be aware of the bonus of the questions. Remember the cultural differences, like some countries are relatively conservative and some questions might not be appropriate to ask. Or some tasks could be offensive to them, so be aware of the game. And But other than that, a successful iceberg game could become a very successful start of the exchange. So here's it. And the next slide will be tips number nine. Next slide, a memorable closing. So on the last day of the exchange, usually it is the best time to exchange small gifts to your delegates. So here we usually set up a session for our CPs to write some words to our delegate on a card. So like we will stick a card on the back of the delegate in the closing ceremony and let our CPs to write whatever they want on their back so that our delegate could bring all the blessing back to their home country. And if possible, a closing video to round up the whole exchange journey would be a big bonus for the hosting. And this is usually the key for future opportunity of the exchange too. So next slide, please. Next slide will be tips number 10. Try to enjoy every moment. LC and CPs are always busy contacting and arranging stuff in the right place during the whole thing, I know. But I know that feeling of anxiety, but especially when there are too many uncertainties and too many unexpected incidents happen. But do remember, do remember one thing, you are not only the program planner, you are also part of the program. So your altitude will affect others. An enjoyable atmosphere will only be built when you enjoy every moment of the journey. So if there are some mistakes happen, violating the original plans, let bygone be bygone, keep calm and make it happen. And the show must go on, go on anyway. Then why don't you just enjoy the show, right? So here comes 10 tips of the hosting of MSAP Exchange. But here I'm going to give you one more extra tips after the hosting. Next slide and next slide, please. So the final extra tips will be next. Try to keep in touch with each other. Yes, distance means so little when someone means so much. The most precious part of MSAP is not traveling, but the friendship and bonding with our borders. Yes, I am the LC, the hosting during the MSAP, but I usually make it more personal after exchange. So I do care whether they are staying safe and sound during the COVID-19 pandemic, and I worry about my friend's safety when there were like violent pro protests in Indonesia or in Thailand or in Hong Kong. And I'm not just doing this on my own. I also encourage my CPs to do so. Try to keep contact with them. I'm not saying this because it might bring more exchange opportunities to your chapter, but because friendship is the value of AMSA. And besides, I, I do love receiving postcards from all over the world. Yeah. So I think this is the end of my presentation. So do you have any questions? Q&A section. Okay. Um... Thank you so much, Ms. Kola. Uh, perhaps we can go back to our presentation now. Right, so we have the first question for today, which has been asked by our participants via the registration form. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, the first question. In the future, when a physical AMSAP is possible once again, what are the important aspects of exchange to take note of, especially in terms of logistics and meals? Well, I think I've already talked about the meals in my presentation, but 
if you are talking about the first exchange after the COVID-19 pandemic, I think the first thing we'll have to pay attention will be the vaccination status of each delegate because during the COVID-19, the traveling become a high risk activities. And I believe none of us would like to get infected for an MSA exchange. So the vaccination status is not only protecting ourselves, but also our delegate and CVs. And for their part, the verification of vaccination help from in international would, would, would be very important, I think so. And for further things like logistics or meals, I believe that uh, if you have any question, you can always seek help from our international director of MSAP. You have, you have your deaf mama, and always remember that if you can't find her, then you still have Majori grandmama. Yeah, always seek help from them. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kola. Okay, for the next question. What are some suggestions of activities or things we, the hosting university or country, should pay attention more to so that the delegates won't be bored during a virtual AMSAP? Um, oh, actually, it is really quite different between a physical AMSAP and a virtual AMSAP. Because in physical AMSAP, we could have real interaction and we shall visit many different places but these are all gone in virtual platforms. So my suggestion here is try to bring more props or fun in the virtual MSAP. Say like everyone has to bring their mascot or a door, yeah, like pika pika here, and try to let them join in the meeting actively. And if he or she has a pet, let them join into the camera as well and have some motivating songs in between each section or try to bring in some virtual icebreak game and make the whole thing funnier. Do some stupid thing, yes. It might look stupid, but maybe fun also. And since this is the first time that MSAP turned into virtual platform, so I don't have much experience on that too. You guys are going to be expert, but I'm not. But here are my suggestions, stay creative and explore whatever it could happen in front of the camera. Don't be shy, just try to explore something new and innovative. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Kola. So now since we have um, an extra time of 10 minutes, we are now opening the questions to the floor. So you may type in your questions in the chat box or you may verbalize your questions and un I mean, unmute yourselves and verbalize your questions. So do we have any questions? Come on guys, keep the flow going. Please ask away. Let's see. While we wait, um, there's also another thing that I'd like to talk about. Um, actually, personally, um, you might you must also think about your incoming delegates, right? When they come into your country, for example, maybe your country is not a Muslim country. So be sure to take note of who your delegates are, what uh, what um, religion they're from. Maybe they're Muslim, so you, may have, you this is very important because you'll be preparing meals that are um, halal meals for them. So this is very very important. You know, it, it's it's kind of tough when they come over and then you serve non halal stuff, so it won't it won't be good for them lah. So just uh, be sure to be informed about what your delegates uh, what your delegates what your delegates need. Cater as much as you can. Right. That that's just from me. <laughs> Okay, no questions? No one's asking questions? They are shy. <laughs> Don't be shy, guys. Come on. Yeah, Kola is nice. Look at her, Pikachu. <laughs> pika, pika. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Oh, I see Mikhail and Sharon's ra raising their hand. Hi, Mikhail. Mikhail's from AMSA UI. I'm, I'm working with him now with Elfamsep. <laughs> okay, come Mikhail. Mikhail first. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Davina. Yeah. Hello, everyone also. So maybe, um, sorry for the laggy camera. My laptop is overheating at the moment, but... <laughs> I want to ask about, because this is my first time doing an AMSEP and maybe uh, for my case, it's AMSEP x FAMSEP. So how do you guys usually like do the bonding? Because 
we did we did our nation uh, national hostings first, and then uh, we did our our local games, and it was very fun for them. And because all the jokes were like localized, and uh, they get it a lot. But in terms of international hosting, how do you guys find the thin line or the boundary between what to joke or what not to joke, or what kind of bonding games do you guys usually do, especially in an online setting? Yeah. So maybe that's all for me. Thank you, guys. Oh, your first time. Congratulations. It will be an amazing <laughs> experience, I'm telling you. And as for the bonding part, I think that I should refer to the strategy part that it, it depends on whether you are going on for one-on-one -on -one strategy or a group-on-one uh, strategy. Like if you are going on one-on-one -on -one interaction, then maybe you can arrange guys who can uh, connect them not only in the MSAP session period, but also after or before. Or you might send postcard to them directly, so you will have a little bit more real interaction in the reality. And I don't know, but because if everything turned into virtual, then it seems that everything could be possible. And yes, but if you are talking about how to build a longer lasting relationship, my suggestion here is try to keep contact with postcard. It is a very good props to be used to build relationships. And yes, always try to say hello and keep uh, keep updating what's happening in their home country. Once they know that you're keep updating their home country, what's happening in my home country, like, because uh, I'm actually born in Hong Kong, I'm just studying medicine in Taiwan. And whenever I know something happening in Hong Kong and my friends from Germany know something about Hong Kong. They will ask me and they will, they will know my feeling. And yeah, it will be a very warm, warm conversation indeed. And I think this is the key part of how to keep long lasting relationship with your MSAP friends. Okay, thank I you, Kola. I your question. Yeah, Did, was your question answered, Mikhail? It was very answered. Thank you again, Cole, for the uh, for the answer. Uh, maybe just a follow up question because that was a question uh, regarding about the follow up and long lasting bonding. But I really want to know about the bonding sessions be, uh, within the AMSEP. So, what do you guys usually do to ensure that uh, bonding actually occur during the sessions and especially in an online setting? So that's why I really want to know. Uh, other than long lasting friendship, long lasting friendship also very important. Yeah. During the MSAP session, usually we play games. We know the, how the mobile goes. But if you are really worried about whether they feel good about, about, about the session, you can have something like the evaluation form after, after each session or each day. Usually we will have a, a brief evaluation on, on the end of the day of, the, of each MSAP, yes. But it's a very brief one, like, like give me a hand, five, so how much score you give for today? then you will know how much they like today's sessions. And if there's some problem, then of course you should ask. Yes, honestly, it's the best strategy here I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Kola. Okay, uh, just to, can I add on something? Okay, okay. Just to <laughs> Kola's point. Um, so Mika, you're like wanting to know how deep we can go, right? to what extent the line can be reached, is it? So the line won't be break, is it? That was yeah, like yeah, for your very less, first question. Yeah. Okay, um, so I just want to know for your farm set, how many meetings did you have with them before the relay? But it was very lackluster to be honest because the first one was okay, but only one of the representative came. And the second one, only two of them came, but it was due to a force major because they had a blackout, so they had no electricity. So it was very, it was a very, uh, yeah, it was very, very sad for them. So, and then we we haven't had any more meetings after that. So yeah, we are hoping to meet them again like soon, I guess. Okay, so how many days to go before the real day? For before the what? Sorry. The real the day itself. Oh, the real day. The real day is going to be held around like early February. So it's the February 14th. Yeah. February 14th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Thank you so much, Mikhail. I understand that sometimes you get your lists, your universities at a very late time due to the local protocols, you know, distribution here and there, and then, then you bid and then you are uh, then you know that you are selected to host. And so the process is very different for each chapter. But one thing's for sure, preparations cannot be last minute. And meetings are encouraged as many as possible, definitely with very specific agendas and definitely bonding for each session that is very, very encouraged. Um, meetings are very, very different, especially when they are virtual. You can't really see how that person, uh, especially when they say, oh, I can switch on my camera and then you don't know what the person is actually feeling or showing or expressing. And so um, things to, to make your meetings engaging, switching on videos, making sure that you have a stable internet connection, who will be attending today, you know, every time make double checking, uh, cross checking all the time, making sure that it is at least two months before, especially on a virtual one. And especially if you know that your training university members have internet connection and force major all the time <laughs> so they they have recurrent ones and even for us when we have meetings with their authorities it's also a very big problem to be honest so um it is a very big cultural difference that uh, and um, logistics difference that i can say that we can't really relate and sometimes we find it a bit more of like an excuse i'm so sorry but i don't think that this can be posted up but this is uh, how we feel. This is how we, we felt at, as well at first. But then it is something inevitable and they are also trying their best. So knowing that all of these are happening, okay, if you think that you are not prepared, then maybe reconsider a, a later date or prepare and have a better protocol at national level so that you guys have more time to prepare and bond better before. Because only you guys then will know how deep you, I can't tell you guys how deep you guys can go, but that's the only way to analyze and understand one another. But I know that they can go very deep, guys. <laughs> the African friends, they can go really deep with jokes. I, 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 I'm the one that is downfounded and I really can't take their jokes. So yeah, this, this is just a little tip from my side, yeah. So stay strong and all the best. I understand the problems there. Okay, thank you so much, Marjorie, for helping to answer the question as well. Okay, right now we have another question from Sharon's. Let's go, Sharon's. Okay, um, thank you very much for your opportunity. Um, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Sharon from AMSA Indonesia. Um, I would like to ask whether um, there are there any suggestions for an AMSA university that has only started uh, to apply an AMSA bidding for the very first time. Thank you very much. Are you, are you first like hosting or? Oh yes, for hosting. First hosting. Well, usually it is very nervous to do the first hosting, I know. But um, all I could think about is stay calm and make it happen. <laughs> because you are doing the first time. I, I know I can say so many rubbish things because of my experience, but you will you, you feel like rubbish too. <laughs> yes. You, you know that uh, when I say that, I'll oh, try to plan A and plan B, and then whatever the situation, you'll find that there's always need a plan C. Yes, uncertainty always happen. Just be prepared for any sort of uncertainties. And remember to enjoy the moment because when you have plan A and plan B, and, and it's always, you will always, always find something happen. But once you have the first experience, then you can you know that you, you know how, what should be prepared for the second time yes all the thing about like logistics or traveling or meals i believe that i believe that you'll be well prepared for each of the details yes and anything to add on grandmama majority well said, well said. It's very local. I don't know how to help you because maybe you guys have a criteria to reach, right? So, yeah, and I know that you guys have a very intensive selection process. So, mm, what I can say is all the best. And uh, please always refer to other chapters. I think other chapters, they have their social medias and they will actually post about how their tentative will be. And I think they are very good references as well. I learned from them, especially Taiwan. Very, yeah, thank you. 
yeah, remember that you are not alone. You can always seek help from your international director and you can also ask your LC's colleagues. Yep, yep. Thank you so much, Sharon, for that question. Um, yeah, like what Kola and Marjorie said, you are not alone. Be sure to seek to your you seek seek uh, reach out to your uh, national deal AMSAP as well. Salvero. Salvero is tip top in his leadership and all so you can always reach out to him and ask him any questions. Or you can also, you know, slide into my DMs and ask me any questions if you'd like. All right. So um that's about it. Uh next slide, please. Since we are running out of time, that'll be our last question for today. Right, so thank you all for your wonderful and interesting questions. That ends the first half of our session. We hope that it was informative and will come in handy in planning for future AMSAPs, EAMSAPs, and FAMSAPs. So before we move on to the next session, let us express our heartfelt gratitude to our invited speaker, Ms. Kola, by presenting her with a certificate of appreciation. Right. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for your time and knowledge. We'll be emailing you a copy of the certificate later today. All right. Okay, next slide, please. All right. Okay, so this part. So we are straight away proceeding to the SGD or small group discussion session. So for this part, I will be using the breakout rooms feature of Zoom. You'll be sorted automatically into your groups as um, I've sent in the group list via your RCs already. So please make sure everyone is given a chance to contribute to the discussion. So we're short on manpower, so we don't have enough facilitators, but we we believe in you guys and we believe you'll be able to come up with some creative and innovative solutions to the scenarios. So we'll be hop hopping from room to room to check up on you guys if you need any guidance. So not to worry. Right. So, okay. Next slide, please. So after the 15 minute discussion in your respective groups, participants would need to present their opinions to the main session. So please use these 15 minutes effectively to deliver your ideas to the group members. You may also access the grouping list as well as your case scenarios um, respective to your groups in the link that uh, that is projected on screen right now. Please take a screenshot of the case assigned to you to facilitate your discussion later. Also, uh, a quick remark to you guys. Um, some of you might not be assigned accordingly as, as, as it has been decided because of the latecomers and the change of names and everything, but it's okay. You'll be in different groups uh, regardless. So I hope that's not an issue. Thank you so much. So next slide, please. Okay, so these are the instructions for the SGDs. You are given two minutes to read the instructions on screen. All right. If you need any assistance, you can click on the more button on Zoom and select ask for help. So um, some of you have been assigned already into your breakout rooms and some of you, it might take time to assign everyone entirely. So yeah, please uh, be patient, right? So if there are no questions, the time is now. We'll get into the breakout rooms and come back after 15 minutes. Okay, hold on, yeah. Okay, welcome back participants. So it was nice to see all of our group discussion earlier were like very, very engaging. I can't wait to see your presentation. I would also like to apologize uh, for the technical issues. Some of you were directed to the rooms that you were not assigned to initially, but I hope that the discussions were fruitful and you managed to come up with a solution. And if you don't, don't worry about it. We were learning from each other. So let's learn from the presentations after this. All right. So Unfortunately, only one group from each case will be presenting their answers for today as we are running short on time. All right, so for case one, we would like to invite the participant of group five, please, to present their solutions. So perhaps a representative from group five. Uh, hello. Is Hi. My voice hello. audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Yeah, uh, so uh, I am from the group five. Um, so I think I, I will try to uh, to present the discussion that we uh, and you know the discussion 
uh, the last discussion that we discussed. So uh, this case is, um, maybe I should read it uh, one more time. COVID-19 hit the world and our faculty has ordered you to cancel an upcoming AMSEP that is scheduled to be held in less than a week. So this is a very urgent uh, problem because you know the fact that it's 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 going to be held in less than a week is very urgent but the the airline or uh, um our uni our faculty's regulation ordered us not to to not to uh make this amsap happening offline or in physic physically so i think our our solution from our discussion is to to see, uh, firstly, to to see the the, the airlines uh, policy regarding the refund regarding cancellations of flights, especially during this COVID nineteen period, cancellations refunds uh, is much easier because you know we have the same problem. We cannot go. Uh, if we go, we can you know we can uh, spread the virus even more. So I think that's uh, that's very likely to happen, but. If the airlines doesn't want to refund, then I think um, from what we discussed, I think communication between the, the 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 host and the delegates and also the airlines uh, it needs to be done because you now we need to explain uh, much thing about the problem and you know we can even uh, send them like proof of like uh, the faculties um, the faculties. The message or you know any proof that that states uh that the faculty is canceling this exchange because of the COVID 19 so that the airline can understand our problem and finally make a refund it can be like 20 like 20 percent or 30 percent refund but um yeah i think that's our solution uh if there's anyone from group five who wants to add this add. thank you Well, I want to add to Goldie something, if Devina permits me. OK. So yes, just like the way the Goldie said that. So first of all, our main plan is to get the refund from the airlines authority. But unfortunately, in this kind of COVID situation, airlines, is, airlines business is also collapsing. So it's really tough to get the refund from the airlines. And there are some cheap tickets where the refund policy is completely unreachable. So airlines, so we, we cannot expect that 100% refund we can get for the airline. So plan B is uh, before uh, signing the chapter uh, chapter uh, chapter program that when we sign the program, so this should be mentioned that by to the delegates who are willing to participate in this kind of program that that's, they might give some compensation by themselves because uh, chapters like us, we don't have that much uh, refund, that much fund to provide if this kind of cancellation occurs because uh, due to the last uh, due to the pandemic the last in the last years we cannot organize any kind of physical program where we can get a large amount of money to um, to refund the ticket or to um, compensate the ticket by the by bought by the delegate so it's kind of really tough situation so my proposal is that uh, when we sign the protocols then we should have a very uh, very specific specific way that the chapter the chapter the delegates from uh, the hosting country uh, from the chapter, they will provide a certain amount of money, maybe 30 to 40 percent uh, will be provided by the chapters. Yes, that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Goldie and Sharuk. Uh, very, very nice um, solutions that you guys have um, presented over there. So, would our speakers like to provide some comments? Um, okay, thank you so much. So, um, Feasible yet difficult solutions, I can say, very subjective, depending on the airlines as well. But one thing's for sure, always refer to the constitution, which type you're using. And um, you have to know how your twin chapter universities will act. So it, you have to understand how they will act, how they will compensate in any way. Um, I am a very altruistic person. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying in as a whole, but uh, I actually faced this at the end uh, of my tenure at my own university itself. And so what happened was that we actually approached the university to help. And the university said yes. 
So it is a very subjective way of solution. Definitely be very open and about it. I mean, because this is your train university, so they have to be really transparent and open about it, about the whole situation that they are unable to come over and in what way you can actually help also. So uh, another case that I faced was the other way around. And so um, actually helped to also ask for funds and raise funds from our side because we felt like even though COVID-19 is no, no one is to be put at fault, definitely you never knew that this pandemic is going to happen and everyone will be at risk. But um, my way of solution would be trying to help them to reduce in any way that I can if I am involved. So it, it is a very uh, personal approach, but nevertheless, uh, follow the constitution first to who should compensate and reimburse vice versa, type one or type two. And then after that, then you see how you can help. And there's always a clause in the constitution, the rights of the international deal ANSEP. And at that time, I was also the international deal ANSEP and um, I personally approached the faculty to help us out and seek for advices because um, though we are adults, but they are adults that have experienced way more financial constraints and financial obstacles in their life and they will know the resources to help out. And I know that they are still <laughs> very nice and kind to help out, but it definitely depends on your own situation, like the whole situation. But that was how I solved the issue. It's just a point of reference for you guys to refer to. Um, so maybe Kola or Jovi, because I think Kola and Jovi both experienced the same thing as well. We went through that transition of lots of cancellations, yeah, in our tenure. Well, it is actually a hard question because the, the flight ticket fee will be the hardest part to overcome and compensate. Uh, well, well, in my opinion, the first thing you have to do is try to minimize the loss for both parties first. And then you have to check out the constitutions, which parties should be responsible for the compensation. And remember that no one wants to stop the MSAP. It is just an accident. So remember your manner. Blame no one is very important. Just let both parties know that no one is no no one wants this situation to happen. And it is just an unfortunate. Yes. Because your LDT would matter and it will definitely affect the conversation and negotiation at the end. And yeah, like what Marjorie Grandmama say, be open and and seek help whenever you need. Okay. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Any more um, insights from perhaps our Opa Jovi? Jovi, would Hello? you like to say anything? Ah, yes. Hi, Jovi. Uh, Yes, uh, yes, like what Madhuri said, this is exactly what I experienced right before two weeks before my, before my exchange and everything, everything got cancelled last, uh, last time when in the March before COVID-19. So what I can say, uh, like I agree with what all Madhuri and Kola have said, everything is, you, it's very subjective and how you approach it is very subjective as well. Because when money is coming, it's very sensitive, but we have to be transparent how you're going to handle this. And... Another thing I would say, uh, try your best to help to reduce the loss, the delegates loss, or what you can do is you can approach your faculty, be, your, if your faculty is, you know, that will not agree to give them, to provide any financial help, maybe at least can ask them to write, to provide an official letter from the school, because in this scenario, the, this is, yeah, the school is, the, your faculty is cancelling the event. So try to ask maybe an, at least an official letter from the school, because last time for my situation, there was, around in February or March when COVID-19 is not so explored as right now. So at that time, getting back the refund is actually not as easy as what we have now, especially from the flight company. So at least you can provide some proof from your faculty to the delegates and the delegates can submit to the flight company or airline company to get back any refund if possible. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I want to add on. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for the insights, Ms. Marjorie, Ms. Kola, and Mr. Jovi. All right, moving on to the next um, scenario. Thank you so much to Group 5 for presenting. Really, really an amazing presentation. All right, so yes, uh, let's have the representative of Group Group 9. Is Group 9 here? Hello. Uh, yes, that's me. Uh, okay. 
So Hi, everyone. Then, yeah. Well, we actually discussed case one uh, because. Oh, oh, my apologies, my apologies. Then if that's the case, uh, I'm really sorry. I'll move on to the next group to present the second case. Is that all right? Thank you so much, uh, Mansi, and I'm really, really sorry. So uh, can we have uh, perhaps group two to present the second case scenario? Uh, yeah, uh, is it okay if we share screen because we type it out on Google Doc? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, Mao. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, you yeah, can. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the questions are: Imagine you are you as you as a regional chairperson or. Um, so X, the settings is set in February, and everything is hit, but um, everything is hit. So what we wanted, uh, what was asked was how will you reassure your members on the impending activities such as, but not limited to upset with um, Z. So basically from this, from this case scenario is that there is no forces measure um, declared just yet. But for era safetyness, um, this exchange is not going to happen, unfortunately. So what we will do is that we will inform them of decisions made in regards of UMSAT organized. And we assuring them that the events will either be conducted in alternative ways, such as online or postponed, depending on which is more practical as the situation is unpredictable. Furthermore, by the end of the events, all delegates, we will assure them that whatever objective in organizing AMSET, um, they will be equipped with it. And providing of them or someone similar experience, for example, knowing more people and getting known to getting um, to know about the hosting country more, and also the knowledge that they ought to get even um, either virtually or physically will be the same. So uh, I give the uh, pass on to Mikhail for the second part. All right, okay. Hello again, everyone. So yeah, uh, that was uh, the assuring part. And now we're going to do the second part, which is about how will we respond to it? So maybe we, uh, we, started, we started to discuss about how we're going to do it technically. So of course, we're going to dif disseminate the information via email. So what we're going to do as a regional chairperson is we're, we're going to write the email and about the condition about uh, the whole, uh, the whole AMSA or maybe about what's going on at the moment. But we also say that we are in this together, so we are not alone. So everyone is experiencing the same thing and we're going to solve this together. And then what we're going to do now because it's on is an on online setting and so we what we want to do is to do a, no, a national meeting with the different representatives from each university within the chapter. So what we're going to do in this meeting is to discuss about like for like our past plans for example maybe what what are the kind of answer that has been done or what kind of answer that is going to be done and then about the current one so what are we going to do and then in the future about like, what are we going to do? Are we going to make it an online session? Are we going to make it virtually? Or are we going to postpone it? So it's, it's, uh, we don't want to like, as a regional chairperson to, uh, to, to come up with a solution ourselves. We want all the representatives to contribute their own opinions and also contribute their own answers to it. So after we compile the answers, uh, we're going to follow up with the overall chairperson in AMSA International and to update uh, his or her about the current situation and the future actions that will be done. And then next, we'll keep in touch about the uh, different um, representatives within the chapter about what, uh, what are the, for example, the final solution from or final decision from the overall chairperson. And finally, to make sure uh, in the midst of waiting, we, we try to keep up and try to uh, back up with some solutions or some, uh, yeah, some solutions to, uh, to uh, as a backup plan. So if, you, if uh, unwanted incidences or unwanted more, more uh, very hard circumstances up here. So yeah, so that's probably what we were going to do within our own chapters. Yeah, thank you guys. Okay, thank you so much, uh, group two. Uh, I also appreciate the fact that you guys prepared a presentation, a Google Docs. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, perhaps we can uh, get feedback from our speakers.
Uh, Miss Marjorie, Miss uh, Kola, Mr. Jovi. Yeah, yeah. Kola and Jovi can go first. Oh, I think <laughs> I think I've done a very good job. Such a detailed plan uh, of of the of the scenario. But I have I only have one reminder that the case if you guys have to consider postpone and activities, it is indeed a gamble because you you have no idea when will be possible to hold the event again. So even you set up a day like half a year later or one year later, it might not be possible to hold as well. So always have a plan B. Even you choose to postpone your activities then, then many many of our countries, many of our chapters have to cancel their exchange even after postponing for like half a year and one year for this pandemic. So be prepared for that. If you choose to postpone something, it is a gamble. Okay, thank you, Kola. Um, from Jovi? Oh, yeah. Actually, I also want to uh, mention that I agree with Kola. I always come up with a plan B because the only thing predictable at this moment is unpredictability. So I always come up with something plan B or because I agree. I think someone, maybe just now, majority or Kola also mentioned. I think it's Kola mentioned. What you all plan is actually nothing will happen in the end. So always come up with some plan B and discuss with involve all the involve all the all your committees or from if you are the regional chairperson, involve your executive committees and also the representative from all the units to discuss to go go through this together. Thank you. Okay, perhaps from Miss Marjorie. Thank you, thank you so much, Kola and Jovi. So if you are a national executive board member and you are putting everyone's life at stake and you may be the first chapter to actually halt, put everything on halt. At that time, it was actually Japan. Japan was one of the first one. So how do you reassure your members? Definitely with evidence. I, I would always want to go with evidence. With what your Ministry of Health has suggested, what is the best protocol, what is being implemented, what is best for everyone at this point of time? Everyone, I mean, at February, it was a very different, distinct outbreak, I can say. It was just an outbreak. Uh, like the situation but like only a few chapters actually on hold and a few chapters really want to get out a few chapters just want to continue oh my god why are they stopping we don't have COVID yet so there were really um it was a mess at that time so it was very difficult for us and uh, I will I want to extend my highest gratitude to all of the chapters that actually voiced out um, and like what they say please discuss with your theme and then voice out accordingly to Amsa International. Don't be shy. Don't feel like you are leaving out or what, but this is for the best of your members. Okay, so um, events can be held in other means. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. And you guys did great, by the way. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Marjorie, Miss Kola, and Mr. Jovi for your insights. Right, with that, uh, this marks the end of our SGD session. I personally enjoyed everyone's enthusiasm and everyone's contribution, and we wish you all the best in bringing your chapters to a greater height when it comes to AMSEP. Okay, so next slide, please. Mo. Oh, okay, nice. So our next and our final session for today will also be an interactive session and presentation by our next honorable speaker who has gave us a few insights just now, someone I've worked with for quite a while, also in a recent exchange we had with AMSA. So let us welcome Mr. Jovi Wong, the local director of AMSA, of AMSA Malaysia from AMSA Monash University in the tenure 2019-2020 on how to perform successful negotiations at university and national level, followed by a short Q&A session. So participants may type out the questions using the Zoom chat feature, or even better, please verbalize your questions instead. You may also raise your hand if you wish to verbalize, okay? So without further ado, let's invite Opa Jovi. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Davina, for the introduction. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm Jovi from Monash University, in Malaysia. Uh, is that my slide next? 
Yeah, all right. So yes, again, I want to thank Stavina and Namsa International for inviting me to uh, give the thought and share my experience on how to perform successful negotiations at university and national level. And this will involve a lot of communication and communi communication is an art. I, <laughs> Uh, I admit that I'm not actually not very good with my communication skills, but we are all still learning. So I can share my experience that I gained from the previous MSET on how to negotiate. All right, next. Next slide, please. So these are the outline I'm given, how to run effective meetings, communication and interpersonal skills. And lastly is rational versus emotional. This is an interesting topic. Next. So to start a negotiation with another chapter, I would strongly recommend you to have an online meeting as compared to texting in maybe via the WhatsApp group. Because personally, I have I had experience negotiating with two different chapters. One is via the texting, and that was before the pandemic COVID-19. And another one is through the online meeting. I would say online meeting is much more effective because the two chapters just have to discuss a date for the meeting and sit down to discuss further details about, about, the, about your exchange during the meeting. And it also provides better communications. So, and I'm sure, I'm pretty sure all of, all of us are more familiar with the Zoom meeting or any other online meetings since the pandemic, right? Yeah, next, next slide, please. So how to run effective meetings, next. So the most important criteria in an effective meeting is commitment. Everyone should be committed, not only to the meetings, but to the whole exchange program and always show your support, your cooperations, and also your interest in running the whole program. Next, before any meetings, always set up the agenda because the agenda provides a compass to, of the whole meeting, the whole conversations, so that the meeting does not, will get back to the track if it's when the off course. What, what should be included in the agenda? First is the participants. Who is gonna attend this meeting? And what are the priorities of this meeting? What are the sequence and timing of the topics that we are going to discuss during the meeting? And lastly, what are we expecting from this meeting? What are the results and the outcomes from this meeting? After you have set out all the agendas, it should be shared to all the participants that are going to attend the meeting because so that they can come prepared because everyone should come prepared to a meeting with an idea of what's going to be discussed during the meeting and what role are they expected to perform during the meeting. Yeah, so if the meeting is to solve a problem or if you have any issue that need and needs a meeting, then the participant should become prepared with solutions, uh, viable solutions or different solutions from different and or different opinions. All right, so fourth is to be punctual. We all should always be punctual. We always remember to be punctual to all the meetings because being punctual, I, I tell you, being punctual can leave a very good impression and image to other people or your training chapter. Because remember, you are, you are representing your university, your chapter, and also your countries in during the MSET, the exchange program. I know this all, all everything in this slide may, looks very basic and obvious requirement, but trust me, these are often forgotten or ignored during a lot, a lot of meetings are st start without a clear sense of purpose and participants are late for no reasons. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, next is, uh, is my opinion actually, it would be better if the meeting is chaired by the national or international uh, director of MSET. So if you are the national DOMC of your chapter, your role is to make sure that both chapters should not dominate the meetings over the others. If some people is dominating during the meetings or dominating the co conversations, the DOM, national DOMC can make a point by asking other chapter for their ideas or their opinions and make adjustments as necessary to ensure equal workload between the two chapters. This is significantly important, especially for the virtual MSET nowadays, because the two chapters are hosting and delegating at the same time. And always, uh, before you end the meetings, always leave the last few minutes of every meeting to discuss what's the next step. End your meeting with an action plan. The discussion should include like, deciding who is responsible for what tasks and what the deadlines are. And after you have end the meeting, always prepare a meeting summary should be sent to all the participants of the meetings and because the summary is a record of what has been accomplished and what is the next step as the team progresses. So make sure someone is assigned uh, to jot down or not down during the meeting if you, are, if you think you are unable to do that. Next slide, please. Yes, so the second part is about the communications and interpersonal skills. Next slide. Yes, 
All right. So during any meetings when you are negotiating with another chapters, there's two types of role in the meetings. First is the listener, and second is the speaker. Everyone takes turn to become the listener and the speaker. So when your role is a listener, you should be actively listening to the speaker. Focus fully and show your interest in what's being said by the speaker and avoid interacting or trying to redirect the conversations to your concern because your, your turns will come later. So it's very important to show your respect to the speaker. And talking about this, one additional point is during online meetings, try to everyone please turn on their video, video's camera because it's very disrespectful to the speaker if you all just turn off your video and the, the speaker is talking to the black screen. And there's also a very big difference between active listening and simply hearing because by just simply hearing, uh, listening well does not mean just you understand what's the words and the information is being communicated, but also understand what is the emotions that the speaker is trying to convey. With this, you can have a better communications and build a stronger and deeper connections with your twinning chapter as well. So whereas when you are when your role is the speaker, you always be assertive, be confident in your ability and your opinions because the confidence can help you to communicate to communicate better and you can convey your points more clearly to your to your twinning chapter. Being assertive means expressing your thoughts, your feelings, your needs. Don't be afraid to, to express your needs and your limits in an open and honest way while standing up for yourself and respecting others. It does not mean you it does not mean being aggressive or demanding during the meetings because effective communication is always about understanding the other person. It's not about winning an argument or forcing your opinions to your to the others. And yeah, so lastly, it's about paying attention to the non-verbal communications. But I do understand uh, through the online meeting, this is the body language or the is very limited. Perhaps only the facial expression or the tone of the voice. So you can uh, adjust your non-verbal signs or signals according to the context and avoid some negative body language. It, yes, again, like what I've mentioned, try to turn on all your videos during the meeting. So at least we can look at your face, look at your facial expression to pick out any non-verbal cue. Next slide, please. All right, so next is the interpersonal skill. During, how do you, what are the interpersonal skills during the negotiations? And again, there's some overlap with the communication skill that I mentioned just now, but similarly, and firstly, always be respectful to the people that you are negotiating with. Always show some respect, turn on your video and attend all the meetings. And next to show your empathy, but we will talk more about this during the last part of my presentations. And Remember, do not do not point ping, fingers and place blame on the others when something happened because you should instead you should try to understand and understand what are their feelings and this and the situations they are in. Third, third is to be yeah, third is to be culturally aware and sensitive because we all come from different backgrounds, different cultures and religions. So being sensitive, being culturally sensitive can create harmony during the negotiations and avoid your twin chatter from being offended accidentally by you. I think this brings back to what Kola have mentioned just now because always remember do some research about your training chapter. Maybe you can have a basic, no, basic, basic, basic knowledge about their culture behind. Again, also another another things try not to touch on the sensitive issue, especially like the politics issues that your training chapter may be facing because there may be any miscommunications in between. And always show positive attitude and spread the positive vibes during the negotiations to create, again, to create a harmony during the negotiations. Self-awareness is actually more like an intrapersonal skill instead of interpersonal skills, because it is the internal abilities and behaviors that you can, how you manage your emotions and cope with all the challenges. But the reasons I put in this slide, because intrapersonal skill is the foundation on how you build your relationship with the others, with your training chapter, and it helps you to more easily navigate with your interpersonal relationship with your training chapter. And lastly, and, and, I, and personally, I think it's the most important criteria is to be grateful. For me, I'm always grateful for all the, all the chance that I'm given to host an exchange program or an MSET, and I'm always thankful for everyone that helped me throughout the program from international and national DOM set, my training chapter, and also my committee members. So I believe if you are always truly grateful or you have the gratitude mind mindset, you will automatically be equipped with all the interpersonal skills that they are listed here. Next slide, please.
All right. Lastly, it's about rational versus emotional in negotiating, which I think is quite an interesting topic. Next. Next slide, please. Yes. All right. So there's actually evidence supporting, because I'm doing some research and reading read up. So I found that there's actually evidence supporting the fact that rational decision making can be a better approach as compared to emotional decision making. Because uh, when we are negotiating with another chapter, we want to be efficient and effective. This is always what we all want. We want to settle all the problems as fast as possible. So we tend to use the rational thinking. And the decisions are based on what makes intellectual sense. So when one party or one chapter has more previous experience, then they may know what is better, how to run the meetings, how to run the program. So they will approach on the basis of facts and prioritizing the logic. This is actually perfectly fine in the sense that we are we are efficient and effective. But this is this is also this is also the best part of rationality. However, do emotions ought to be relegated to the silent corner when we important decisions are concerned? Could we all be completely unemotional when negotiating with, with another chapter? Definitely not, right? <laughs> or should we? Probably, probably not. For a very simple reasons, we are human beings. We involve rationality and emotions at the same time. We also need emotions to make decisions. When we are emotional, the decisions are made based on the intuitions. We think and we focus on the emotions. For instance, when you are when we are affected by the empathy, because we always want to show our empathy. When we are affected by the empathy, we are more capable of recognizing things that are hidden uh, from us if, as compared if we are trying to use our pure rationality. A pure rational person, they only have one target. They want to be effective and efficient. They want the programs, the MSA programs to be successful. Successful as in the program goes smoothly, keeping track of the time. All, all the slides are nicely done. All the preparations are well done but he may suppress his emotions not only his emotions he might also ignore the another chapters the other people emotions but you should always remember MSA is a two-way program it involves both chapter both parties not only the both party also including the national and international DRM set all the participants and the committee shares the up and down throughout the exchange program and to me the best part of MSA is that you gain new friendships from different chapters and countries but we only trust people and we are more comfortable to those who are able to smile and become excited with us when we are joking and become upset when something bad happened to us as compared to a pure rational person who only want to everything to be best at best and but ignore all your all the other emotions. And I think I'll just share one of my experience during the last virtual exchange with Ivano because at that time, well, unfortunately, one of the delegates was uh, diagnosed with the COVID-19 is very unfortunate and she's unable to attend all the programs every day. So when this happened, a pure rational person would think, oh, shall we, then shall we still provide her the certificates? Because this will be unfair to other delegates who attend every day. But an emotional person would think, instead of the piece of the certificate, what should we give, what should we provide her is more empathy and support to the delegates. That's what she needs right now, not the piece of certificates or the piece of paper or even the e-certificates but also however if we are over emotional and fail to control sometimes we fail to control our emotions then the problem rises as well because making decision at the spur of anger impatience it will create a lot of it will affect the team's harmony and the morale on the other hand if we are making decisions largely on the grounds of positive or pleasant emotions, this may also be problematic because this may actually slow down the progression of the whole program. So next slide, please. Yes, so what we should do is to strike a balance between rational and emotional minds. Then you may be asking me, how do I know what is the balance? How do I balance between rational and emotional? So my advice to you is to consciously analyze and assess the emotional response to a decision. Whether is it driven by experience and intuition or providing insight into how others might respond to you. Or sometimes it may be, you can also delay your emotional decisions where possible because sometimes the, the emotions may be only short-lifted, especially uh, the negative emotions. Sometimes it's only short-lifted. You just get very angry at that moment, but after that you feel like, oh, maybe this is still okay. It's not that bad. And lastly, always try to seek alternative viewpoint or opinions. Maybe it can be from your national DOM set or international DOM set to 
ensured any unconscious bias that is not leading you astray. So next slide. Yes, so this is in summary, always be rational about the emotional. One of the most important aspects of this interaction between rational and emotional is that rationality allow, allow us to analyze our own emotions and give us the answer, give us answer of why are we feeling this way? And it also allows us to be critical when we are judging our own emotions. The duality between rationality and emotion is what guides us through the negotiations and also what makes the program a success. At the same time, keeping us to move forward, keep our hope alive and keep being who we are. At next, I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Opa Jovi. <laughs> very, very fruitful presentation based on experience and all. Yeah, personally, yeah, guys, be rational about your emotional. Sometimes you have to consider things emotionally instead of rationally. You know, there's there's two types of brains, rational brain and emotional brain. Yeah, you have to know when you're supposed to use those brains, like those side of the brains. <laughs> okay, right. So uh, we have a first question for you today, Jovi. So yes, um, how do we ensure that each negotiation is fruitful? All right, so this is a very subjective question if you ask me. If the exchange program can be held smoothly and all the delegates enjoy then I would say the exchange program is fruitful. But if you ask me how to ensure that the negotiation is fruitful, then I hope my presentations today have answered your questions. How do you run all the meetings effectively and what are the communication skills and or interpersonal skills you might need during the when you are negotiating with another chapter okay okay thank you Jovi <laughs> yeah answered. yeah I, I say I hope my presentation have answered this question okay okay all right so um the next question Okay, what do you do if the twinning chapter is unresponsive in negotiations? We kind of have a similar question uh, to Marjorie earlier, but let's hear from Jovi's point of view because Jovi is pretty experienced in this. Come on, Jovi. So I would say the first thing is when your when your twinning chapter is unresponsive, the first thing is do not be panicked or don't get angry first. Remember what Marjorie have mentioned just now. Remember the hierarchy. If you if your if your twinning chapter is unresponsive, what you can do, first approach your national DOM set. And if the, ask, what, ask your the national DOM set what you can do now. If the national DOM set have, don't know what to do, then she, she will move forward, move further, move upward to the international DOM set and further up to the overall chairperson who is majority. But I, I, what I want to say is, it's very unfortunate if your training chapter is not responsive, but Try not to be angry at, at them because they may be having some personal issues. This brings us back to what I what we discussed just now between rational and emotional. I try to show some empathy and maybe they have them maybe they are really facing some personal issue or other issues. So if you really if you are really facing difficulties, try to approach your national or international DOM set instead of sending some harsh message in the WhatsApp group first to, to the to your training chapter. But I think I would also like to take this opportunity to remind you all, do not go missing in action, especially in the WhatsApp group. Try to res uh, res be responsive because I understand we are all medical students and we have exams and academic programs going on. It's truly understandable and we should also not compromise our academics. But if you are having exams, try to at least inform your training chapter that you are not free between this period of time because you are having exams. So you can discuss with them what should be done what can be what should be settled before your exam or what and what can be left or leave until you finish your exam then only we can settle but also if you are having some personal issues do not hesitate to reach out to your national DOM set or you can assign someone if you have personal issues you can assign someone else from your chapter maybe to replace you or take over your responsibility temporarily until you settle your personal issues Okay, okay. Thank you, Jovi. Okay, now we have uh, another question for you. How can we improve our English speaking skills to be able to negotiate better? Hmm. Um, to be honest, for me, language is not the most, language is not the most important part of your negotiations. The 
skill, the communication skills and the interpersonal skills are more important because during the negotiations, we are not going to use very flowery, flowery words or any any proverbs or any proverbs to when we are negotiating with the others. Just the basic English will do. I'm sure maybe some of you can also tell them my English is not that good as well because English is not my mother tongue. So I'm also not, not an expert in English, but uh, but you should not feel inferior during the negotiations just because of your language. What is more important is how you interact with, with your twinning chapter and how you all run the meetings, how you all negotiate together. But if you really want some help, maybe I can recommend you to listen or speak English more openly, maybe with your friends or your or your colleagues, yeah, to improve your English speaking skill. But Always remember, self-confidence is more important as than the language itself. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Jovi. So we are now opening the questions to the floor. Um, if anyone has any questions, you may verbalize your questions, but please raise your hand first, or you may also type your questions in the chat box. So do we have any questions? Come on, guys. It's our last session. You don't always get to see Opa Jovi, so you may ask. Yeah, guys, let's go. Don't be don't be shy. Perhaps from our local level, maybe the local DO AMSAPs. If I'm not mistaken, Jovi, you have been very long in AMSA Malaysia, right? For like years and years already, right? Because I remember like knowing you ever since I was a local DO AMSAP uh, myself. I think Madre is in AMSA longer than me. <laughs> don't reveal age, please. <laughs> of course, she's the grandmama. Yes. Oh my in... god. Uh, and now I'm entering year five. Year five. Again, I'm saying this me to answer. Everyone's, I think everyone's journey starts in AMSAP. Everyone's journey in AMSA yeah. starts with AMSAP. And <laughs> look at my whole space. <laughs> FYI, I'm also part of the AMSAP committee in UI, right, Mao? Yeah. So, no questions, uh, guys. Oh, there's one in the chat box. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, from AMSA Malaysia, what are the common topics that will be discussed in the negotiation? So, I think one more important is uh, you should go slowly i mean don't rush everything into the first meeting when you are if you are having your first meeting with the another chapter i think the most important is first is maybe to discuss come up with the date first and then you progress slowly moving on to what are the events to be to be held if maybe for the virtual mset what how do we do for maybe one day you can discuss academy another day is for community service and another day for social cultural try not to squeeze too much agenda into one thing because it will be very draggy and the participants will get tired easily. And but if you are if you want to know what are the essential parts to be discussed during the meetings, I think uh Kola can answer this. That what should what's in under the academy, social and cultural Well, my, my one negotiation experience was quite casual because usually people would prefer to be 50-50, 50 in academic, 50 in social or cultural. Well, they will prefer more academic, I think. <laughs> yeah, I hope this answers your question. It's not a hard topic in the negotiation, but usually the easy one to open up the negotiation of some hard topic. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Fong Yan Bin from AMSA Malaysia. Do we have any other questions from the floor? Oh, I want to add something to the question. Oh, okay, okay. Because I think that when you are doing negotiation, there, there, there should be an order that some hot topics should put 
after or put put to the put put back word or like the fee uh, the registration fee or like the dates those that you think that would be hard to open up to put back word and those that could easily open up can put forward like the ratio of the nature like you want more academic or more social or which tourism point you want to go or like uh, how many number of delegates this can be easily opened up can put first so that when you find that you have more common ground that it will be easier for you to open up those hard topics then people will feel like because we have already talked so many things and we have set up and established so many common ground then it will be harder for them to give up your negotiation so it will give you some advantage to bargain or to negotiate a better price for the for the exchange that's my personal experience Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think for this question also, um, the National Dio AMSEPS, uh, if you guys are looking at this right now, I know we have Manju, we have Savero, we have a few other National Dio AMSEPS here, Faiza from Bangladesh. Okay, make sure that before you start a meeting with uh, your twinning chapter, make sure to have an agenda listened on. Like discuss internally uh, in your national team, um, discuss what do you want to obtain from the meeting and then come up with an agenda and then present it to the opposite chapter that you're having discussions with. I always tell my National Dio AMSEPs, make sure to have an agenda. An agenda is super, super important, like something written down. Because if you all of a sudden, you know, you attend a meeting and then you suddenly bring up the topic like, oh, we want to have this discussed. And then the twinning chapter will be like, oh, we haven't prepared this yet because we didn't know. So come up with a, an agenda at least maybe a few days before the meeting. Lah. Okay. So this is just my personal uh, advice okay for you guys okay um right so do we have any more questions from the floor if not i think we can wrap up already sorry guys i'm not sure if you can hear in the background but my neighbor is renovating the house yeah today so it's like quite no noisy in the back. very quiet background oh really <laughs> yeah okay yeah surprisingly when you told me i was i was shocked as well <laughs> okay they toned down a little okay so no questions all right okay um next slide please then so we would like to present and express our heartfelt gratitude to our invited speaker, Mr. Jovi, by presenting him with a certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much for your time and knowledge. We'll be emailing you a copy of your certificate later today. Okay. With this, ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching the end of the AMSEP Masterclass. Before we leave, let us all switch on our cameras for a group photo seat session okay come on let's go maybe Maul, you can stop sharing now and i'll take photo of everyone uh, oh by the way i would say uh can i add another thing so before we take our uh group photo yeah, so Maul. i would like to announce that the next uh, agenda for the master class session uh will be by our director of academics jeremy so it will be uh related with the basics on conducting studies so it will be related on how you can conduct a primary studies and also on how you can make systematic review properly by the experts. Okay, so yeah, don't forget to attend the session, guys. Okay, guys, if you guys, if you guys are interested in learning more about research, please tune into the next session. Okay, all right, let's go. So everyone have their cameras on already. There are five pages, so please bear with me. I might take time, okay? So... For the first page, maybe Stephanie from AMSA Indonesia, your screen is blank. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to take photo. La. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, let me just uh, paste that somewhere. Sorry, guys, I very noob in this. <laughs> okay, second page, right. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, second page is done. Okay, now for third page. One, two, three, smile. Okay, wait, ah. Uh. Yeah, it's very tiring to smile, I know. <laughs> okay, fourth page. Let's go. One, two, three, smile. 
Okay, that's about it. Thank you everyone for attending. Uh, it's uh, really nice to see a lot of us, uh, especially from AMSA Indonesia, who has sent 69 participants. Very, very semangat, ya, yeah, my Indonesians. Also, we look forward uh, to our participations from our from other chapters as well. So, thank you so much. Right? Okay, guys. Thank you. Two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, sir. By the way, Davina.